Welcome to the Gridiron. 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 Fantasy. Fantasy. Football. It's the Gridiron. Well, welcome to the Gridiron. Welcome to the Gridiron. Welcome. Week 10. Week 10. Let's get into it. Yeah. AJ, first off, uh, Solo Kids Corner, anything you want to chat about? Uh, I mean, Derrick Henry. It's amazing. Derrick Henry. Henry. I was just, before this, I was listening to the week three, and you guys were talking, like, really bad about Derrick Henry. (laughs) Yeah. And then now he's number one. Yeah. Is he number one now? He's number one. Nice. Just goes to show that we don't know. Let's get into it. Uh, last week, uh, yeah, AJ, Kid Bowl. AJ, you crushed it. The highest score of the week. On wait, this... wait, wait. This is two weeks ago. This is week nine? This was last week. Ah, okay. Well, uh, <laughs> AJ won, right? Uh, AJ did win. Let's just go I... to AJ's match. Yeah. AJ! <laughs> AJ, uh, you crushed the worst team in the league. Uh, yep. So, good job. You know, it's funny, he got a low score, but I'm now I'm looking one, two, three, fourth four. Lowest. Oh. The fifth, fifth lowest. lowest. That's not that bad, but you only scored 87. Low scoring week overall. Yes. Congrats on your third win. And uh, you, you still are in the playoff race. Nice job. Yes. Uh, Tate beats Kayla. Ooh. Yeah, uh, it came down to the Lamar. Uh, I mean, he did well quarterbacking his team he just uh didn't get the touchdowns that drake slurped up so that was the that was the whole game yeah 112 doesn't yeah. guarantee it for you at all um interesting now that's three losses for the team we were saying was kind of i know two in a row sitting at the top and not coming down so yeah congrats. to be fair like still getting high scores but oh sure just, um uh, not getting the dubs sam Sam crushed me. Gets a win. Uh, it looked like it could have been close going into Monday night, but Kamara and Duvernay <laughs> dud it out. Duvernay did horrible. Likely scored a touchdown on the first drive. It was just over before it started, really. It was. Um, he moves to 6-3. and three. He's the only one with that record. It's an interesting Wrong, story. Jason. He's, I mean, Joe. Uh, the only one of two with that record. <laughs> um, Wrong! Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's in a good spot. Um, yeah. Hurts for you because four and five sucks. Hey, doesn't five. suck, but like it sucks to be there right now. You want to get out of that totally. Um, <clears throat> another four and fiver. Trav gets wrecked by Annie. Yeah, we predicted this. It was yeah. his and Annie, best team in the league record wise and high score. Uh, interesting note. Tyree Kill, number one wide receiver. Yes, by far. Do you know how many touchdowns he has? Three. That's not that many touchdowns. No. For being the number one receiver, he has like two hundred more receiving yards than anyone else. Normally, the number one at anything has a ridiculous touchdown here. Sure. Like, likely Stefan Diggs and Cup have like five, six, seven, eight, nine touchdowns already. I don't know how many they have. They're not a nine, but yeah. I know but, what you're saying. Yeah, to be number one with only three touchdowns is nuts. Next up, uh, <laughs> cut my balls. I beat Dad, I beat Pops. Um, it was kind of close, and then Cooper Cup busted a long one. Uh, Busted. Yeah. You're, you're, I had Cup and Kelsey, and I needed them to pull through, and they did. Pops was smart, played Jeff Wilson, but uh, his weak team wasn't enough. Joe Joe's team is looking super solid, even with Chase on the bench. This was Gramps' uh, third highest score. Maybe your like highest score on the year. It is. And <laughs> you get a loss, so really unfortunate. I but. mean, he should have played Fields. He yeah. would have played Fields, he would have destroyed I wouldn't have played Fields. Like, if I was in that position, I would have played Herbert. Yeah. I think we all would have made the same decision. Hindsight 2020. And uh, now he doesn't need to make that decision anymore. Because he doesn't even have Herbert. He doesn't have him. And then I didn't realize this game was this close. Dang. Oh, neither. Aiden, this game was close, too. Two really close games. The rest weren't that close. It all came down to a fair catch with Shahid. (laughs) Shahid, fair catch. Shahid. And then, yeah. And then, like last, like two minutes of the game. Nice, Shahid. Couldn't get. We've been telling Jason not to play Shahid, and yeah, now we know why. See, fair catches it. 
Well, this is old news. Yeah. Let's talk about week 10. So, we've had a game already. Did yeah. anything crazy happen? Deonta Foreman. Yeah. I mean, I, I pop up first here because it's my, my account. I log in. Um, Kind of a lot of talking going on between me and Sam. Yes. Sam preemptively claiming a 3-0 record against the Hawaii teams. Yeah. And, I mean, not like an incredible start, but a really solid start for Foreman. He's the worst of my backs, and he pulls out 21 points. Young Ho with a forgettable week, but Stinker. overall my projection went up. This is higher than their projected, so a good start for me. Um, I think there's wind on that game. That's why Young Ho carried it so bad. Well, I guess the weather is against me. <laughs> AJ, uh, who do you think is going to win this matchup? Um, I think Elias. Nice. Take that, Sam. Why? Um, well, um, Sam's team, I think, is still really good, but, um, I think, uh, Eli's team is still going to win. Nice. Good. Sweet. I'll take it. Uh, I think I'm going to win, too. I think, uh, I don't know. I, I have advantages at a lot of positions. Like, Cup is better than Jefferson. Seven. That's a tie. Sure, but he washes out his best player. <laughs> CD is better than Sutton. Sure. But the amount that Kelsey is better than Fryermuth and the amount that Pierce is better than Olave, and uh, I just think I have the advantage. I think it's going to be really close. And I I do too. I don't actually, I would love Walker to crush Tampa Bay, but I actually think he's going to have a okay game against Tampa. Tampa's got a good run defense. That's all they got going. They do, them. and Green Bay has a great run defense. Um, so not good matchups for its backs. Anyways, it's hey. going to be close. Close and two teams at the top, and it's a lot riding on this. Same as my bitter rival. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Luke and Tate. Uh, Luke is on a seven-game losing streak. <laughs> Started yeah. 2-0. and We all saw the writing on the wall that his team sucked, and he's lost every game since. However. However. Josh Allen might be hurt. Josh Allen is questionable. Let's click into this and see what's up. Kyle Murray might be hurt too. He wasn't on the field. He got some work in behind the scenes. He, hour to hour situation. He will probably play. Man. That's my guess. This is saying, though, it's really no one knows. Sam might have an update for us too. That's true. In the injury update, we might hear from Slammy Sammy about JL. Um, regardless, Tate's going to win. Yeah. And who's his, yeah. what's his backup situation? Russ, Russ is a perfectly fine backup. Totally. So, yeah. Tate's fine. Tate's going to win. Uh, okay. Kayla versus myself. AJ, what do you think? Um, I think Kayla's going to win. Ooh, why? Ooh. Um, well, I think it's going to be a close one. Uh, yeah, I don't think your team's gonna perform as good as it's been doing, like every week. I still I still think it's gonna do good. I think Kayla's team is gonna do really good. I would agree there, bro. Um DJ Moore already kind of put up a pretty poultry number of four point nine. Yeah, it's less than you want. Less than I want. And uh Kayla's I mean with Derrick Henry slurping number one, she's got the two and three backs on the year right now. So that's always and like the Tough. number six wide receiver. Yeah, she's got a very, very solid roster. And uh, I'm kind of hoping for a massive Jay Herbie game because that's where I have an advantage. Yeah, never good to start two tight ends. We made so much fun of people starting two know, tight ends. But I traded away Gibson, and uh, currently my flex play Doobie is well, on by. They were playing two tight ends, not with bye weeks. And not with that's true. Weeks, just to start the year. So, yeah. Um, You know, I actually think you pulled this one out. Oh. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. My running backs do have good matchups. Running backs have good matchups. Hopkins has a great matchup. LA hasn't been able to stop receivers. And the Herbsicle has yet to, like, do his thing. He's going to do his thing at some point. It's happening this week. He's going to start this week and just go ham for the rest of the season. Yeah. And he's going to not 
what's going to happen is he's going to throw a bunch of touchdowns and Eckler's going to get 60 yards from scrimmage and not score four touchdowns. Like yeah, they're all going to go to Gerald Everett. Yep. And then you heard it here first on the Gridiron podcast. They're all going to Everett. Also, all the touchdowns are going to Peoples Jones and not Nick Chubb. <laughs> Pops' risky move is going to pay off. Or Kareem Hunt, right, AJ? Or Kareem Hunt. Kareem. Yep. Anyways, I think Kayla has a big advantage here. Um, it'll take some luck for me to win this. Next up is, ooh, AJ. AJ versus a full-strength Trav team. This does not look too good for you, bro. What do you think? What do you think about your matchup? Um, I mean, I don't feel the most confident because Travis has his full team with McCaffrey and Berkeley. And then I'm playing CXD, which has Tom Brady. And uh, Mike, I have Mike Evans, so if they and he's got Godwin, good, and, yeah, and he's got Godwin, so if they do crazy good, then my D will do crazy bad. Crazy, yeah, good points. Travis's full strength team is just really strong. You can see he's the highest projected team this week for a reason. Uh, McCaff, Barkley, Godwin, and Kirk all high scorers. Um, Kirk's been slumping, but I think he might be ticking up since, like, his week three to seven slumping. Yeah. Um, kind of like always, AJ, I think your past to success is a big Kyler game, a big Henry game, a big Evans game, and a big Kittle game. Yeah, that's what you need. You're going to need... Henry might be hurt. He's questionable. Ooh. Hamstring injury, I think, was it? Ooh, it's not good. That really limits his upside. Yeah, it does. Uh, but we'll let... Fantasy Sam, yeah. the guru, talk about it. He can fill us in. AJ, I think you might lose this week. Um, yeah, I think I am. Yeah, Travis just has way better running backs than you, unfortunately. Yeah, and AJ, I think if you lose this, uh, I mean, numbers might still be on your side, but I think it might be kind of uh, officially out of the playoff running for this year. Yeah. I think if he loses this, he'll technically need to win out yeah. and win on points to have a chance. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Stuff yeah. is, uh, well, this is a pretty important matchup. Yeah. We haven't really talked about this in the fantasy chat. There's been no uh, chatter. No chatter about Annie? Number one Annie versus, what, number four or five Joe? Both with good records. It's a top-tier matchup. It is, and Annie's got some uh, people on by. Stevenson, who's actually the RB8 on the year I just looked. He's been crushing. Tucker. Tucker. Top five kicker. Yep, and then Hayden Hurst is the better of her tight ends. Um, I don't know. Juwan could put up a random 30-pointer like he did earlier. Well, number one, Annie's in a position where she has to play Clyde, which is not ideal. Well, hold up. Clyde and Mahomes combined. Not terrible, because Clyde is a pass catcher. Well, I'm just... If you look at maybe a more simple evaluation of Clyde, he scored 5-3-9-2. Oh, so, I did not realize that. He's been swinging down. Yeah. If you're going to start any Chiefs running back, technically right now it's Pacheco, just because those kick return yards boost him to, like, 8 11, 7, 6, you know? Sure. They, There's a baseline. They're getting the same amount of volume, all three of their backs. Really, they are. Same snaps, same carries. Yeah. Their backs are unplayable right now, so this is not a good play. Any, I want to call something out here, too. Um, perhaps you should potentially think about next year doing something that Eli loves to do, which is after one of your players busts after, like, two or three weeks, trade him away for uh, good players. Yeah, uh, Eli does that every year, and he gets really good trades. And uh, that would have been a perfect Clyde candidate this year. Yeah, Clyde was a sell-high candidate, because if you looked at all of his usage metrics, the thing boosting up his scores was his touchdowns. And you can't ever rely on touchdowns in fantasy. My thinking around fantasy is touchdowns are like the pot of gold, the bonus. You get lucky with touchdowns. You don't get lucky with yards and volume and snaps on the field the show sure. sure. air yards for receivers things like that so every every other metric for clyde except touchdowns and then one lucky long run and garbage time at the end of the game he was getting two and a half yards per carry on like eight carries and like anyways yeah anyways score wise or projections wise this is a close matchup uh do you have a pick aj um i think joe's gonna win it really just because she doesn't have, um, who's again, uh, Ramondre Stevenson, which is one of her top players. Yeah. 
I mean, sometimes that's enough. If you don't have your guy, then you're not going to win. Totally. I think Joe's only currently missing Jamar Chase due to long-term injury right now. Yeah. You know, one thing that's interesting to me is that Joe is still playing Aaron Rodgers despite his struggles. Maybe we can take a quick peek at Aaron. He's number 17, and he's really done quite mediocre. I mean, I guess he's done mediocre, but that's like reliable. That's a waiver wire replacement level. And Rodgers will get you that, and a waiver wire QB could easily get you way less. I guess just thinking about Joe saying he was going to pull off some trades this year, which he almost did. Uh, and he hasn't got a 20-point above game, Rodgers. I'm surprised Joe hasn't tried to sell someone for a better quarterback, honestly. He's got a strong roster. Uh, I think that's holding him back from taking the next step. Maybe. He could probably sell Chase, perhaps, for QB? Yeah, I don't so know. Something. I don't know. Something. And he's got Dalton over here. And even though Dalton is, like, way worse, like, at least Dalton has hit 30. He hit, like, 10, 30, 17, 10. I honestly might play Dalton against Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh sucks. Dallas D is really good. It's um, tough. It's tough. And uh, trade deadline is less than two weeks away now, I think. It's coming up. I'm giving this one to uh, Joe. Again and again, I don't think it's reliable to have DK and Tyler both playing. They've been doing it since I've said that. They and it's going to bite Annie in the behind. I don't think so. Annie, I'm giving it to you. Go Pat, with 9-1. and one. Pat and Joe got off to a better start. This is an okay score for Patterson. It's okay. It's, it's not a terrible score for a defense, and that's not a great score for a running back. So. No, but Aaron Jones was also dinged up. I think he's probably on a snap count this week. No injury designation, but he was on crutches after the game. So Let's not assume anything. Let's assume that Joe wins <laughs> is what we're all saying. <laughs> Uh, next up is the Digglestein versus the Demon. Uh, yeah, AJ, what do you think about Pops and Jason here? Mm, I think Jason's going to win, but really just because um, Dad doesn't have Joe Burrow, which is yeah, like definitely his top player. Yeah, yeah. AJ, what has Pops been saying about his team? Have you heard anything? Um, No. No? Not really. Nah, he's been too busy working, making making money. <laughs> For sure. Same here, same with me and you. AJ, you're making a ton of money? No. Ah, ah. Ten well, years. Give it like ten give years. Give it ten years. All right. Uh, yeah, I think, surprisingly, I might call this for Jason. Maybe the first time I've said that all year. Uh, yeah, well, check this out. Carter? Yeah. Jones? Yeah. Fant? Yeah. Pickens? Yeah. Would it surprise you if combined they all got 10 points? No. Not at all. Not at all. Six from Carter, a dud from Jones, two from Fant, and two from Pickens. Is that surprising? Is that essentially what they got last week? It would not <laughs> shock me if Pops gets six from Brissett, eight from Cook, three from Wilson. Pops could score less than 40 points this week. Pops could theoretically score 20 points this week. It's a really bad roster this week. Um, it is. It is. I think his ceiling, like the most he could score this week, is like 70. I'd be really surprised. I know his projection says 93. There's no way. I kind of agree there. You know what? Five bucks. I'm saying Pop scores less than 55 points. Five, Five bucks. Betting on the cast! Um, yeah, and Jason just has a couple stars. Like, digs. Himself will outscore all these four players. Diggs, Lenny, Palmer is great. Jason, I traded you Palmer for nothing, and uh, you yeah. didn't start him last week when you should have. You would have won that game. Yep. Uh, although Lenny's going to get shut down by the rock solid Hawks D this week. Honestly, he is. And Lenny's been really dumped the past few weeks. Three, 13, 8. Anyways, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Pops' team's going to lose. All right, is this the last matchup of the week? Yeah, also, Aiden, great name. <laughs> yeah, really good name. Fantastic name transition there, too. Ah, uh, man. Bad teams. AJ. Yeah, AJ, what do you Help think? Help us out here. Um, Aiden's going to win. I don't think Gramps is even going to score. I don't think he's going to score over 90 this week. I don't like Gramps' roster. What about Antonio Gibson, the best running back in the league? Is he? What is he? No, he's 14. He's not bad. That's pretty darn good. Yeah, I know. 
but I traded him. Oh. Um, I mean, I, I think Antonio Gibson is his leader. Well, actually, I think Fields. But yeah. I don't think he's going to get a blowout like us. Super game, honestly. If they lost. I'm not that much of not a fan of Aiden's team. Aiden's team has a good quarterback. Yep. Startable running backs. Yep. High upside receivers. I uh, hate the receivers. Sure, but they're high upside. No, they're not. No, they're not. They score 20 points. No, they haven't. Juju has done really well the past three weeks. Look at this. 21, 23, 13. And then McLaurin turned it up since I traded him. 15, 15, 8. It's not high upside. It's high upside. That's, That's what scratching the surface of... High receiver. upside receiver, Amari Cooper. <laughs> sure. And then a really good defense. So I'm just saying Aiden's team's kind of okay. I like it better than Gramps's. Aiden's going to win this week. Yeah. And keep his hopes alive for the playoffs. And Gramps is playing Dontrell and Chase, a backup running back. The worst defense. Ugh. You can even Raiders, say Gibson's a backup literally, running back. Look at this. The 32. Worst. The worst defense in the league. You can't have a worse defense than the Raiders. Gramps, it, I get the matchup. It makes somewhat some sense. It, it makes no sense. They've put up numbers against crap teams, Denver and Houston. Okay, but they, they haven't had a single game above 15. So they ha- they've only gone down. 14? Think of it this way. One, two, three, four, five, six out of eight games, they've scored less than four points. I get it, but defense is all about matchup. And no, defense is all about defensive touchdowns, sacks, and turnovers. You don't play against the Chiefs. That's all about matchup. You wouldn't play the Bills against the Chiefs. You might. No, you wouldn't. You might. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the Cowboys, for example. It's it's a really big difference. It's a really big advantage. I agree. Look at this. 10, 14, 15, 15, 26, 9. They've scored less than 9 no times. Dude, I agree that the Raiders suck. I'm well, just saying, it's just, I'm not shocked. It's a huge difference between this D and this D. Don't and... S- yeah, compare these Ds, and one's clearly better. If you're comparing better. Aiden's D to Gramps' D, Aiden's D packs a lot more punch. We'll see. About we'll see Aiden's about D. the D. And uh, that is that, it for matchups. I think we're all calling this for Aiden, right? Yep. Yeah. All right. All right. I want to stop screen sharing for a sec. AJ. Let's AJ. Just have a quick discussion. Right now, seven teams. Who do you think is making the playoffs? Um, we'll count them down. Any? Boom! Uh, Eli? Two. Uh, um, oh, Sam? Sam. Kayla, Joe, how many is that? That's five. five. Gabe? Yes. Um,. I don't know about Tate. Um, probably mm-hmm. Joe. You already said Joe. Joe's already in. Oh, um, then Travis, because I think he's gonna, so think he's gonna beat me, and then that's gonna. So you're saying Tate misses out on the playoffs? I don't think Tate's gonna make it. Wow, hot, hot Tate. Tate, love it, dude. Calling out Tate. You did beat Tate. That's true. I, I did cool. destroy Tate like big time. Gotcha. So. Now, which of the teams not in your top seven do you think? Name two teams that you think have a chance to go on a run, win a bunch of games, and maybe sneak into the playoffs. Who's got the best chance to make it? Me. You. Um. So, like the bot, like the ten and under teams. Yes. Yeah. So the seven teams that you didn't list as playoff teams, who do you think has the best chance to maybe make the playoffs? Oh, well, Tate, me. So okay, you and Tate. You and Tate. All right. All right. So you guys are on the outside, but looking in, ready to bust in. Although Tate positionally is in the playoffs right now in the he standings. Is, yeah, but subject to change, he plays Travis this week. So and then that's a big matchup. One more question, AJ. I know it's hard to pull off the top of your head, but what was the best and the worst trade in the league this season? Uh, the worst one? Um, was the Travis Kelsey, and then the best one, 
Yeah. Real quick, the Travis Kelsey one was for Bateman. Bateman out for the season, and Dawson Knox. Aiden hasn't started him once, and he sucks. And who's the third one? James Robinson. And James Robinson, <laughs> who he traded away. <laughs> okay, yeah, that is that is a really bad trade. Ugh. Okay, best for one. Like, the, wait, the best one? I mean, worst for Aiden, best for Eli, kind of the same one. I meant best like you think it helped both teams. Like, what do you think was the most well-articulated trade? Uh, okay, it's an activity. Um, I'm trying to find the traits. I'll throw out Dak Prescott for Robbie Anderson was another huge fleece on your part. Oh yeah, that one, that one, that one. That was bad. I mean, I wasn't trying to bring up this conversation to say, ha, I gotcha. You got two people. I did. Exactly what we were talking about earlier with Annie. Uh, trade away your players who are doing hot, like Bateman and Robbie, for players, you know? Yeah. Someone who's solid. Yeah. Has there been a true, like, mutually beneficial trade yet? I like the trade that you and Gramps did just now, honestly. Yeah. I really do. We'll see how that plays out. It's way too early to say anything about it. Because that went through this morning. But yeah. I like the trade that me and Luke pulled off. Uh, Glorin and Ayuk have done really well since I traded them away. And Najee did his average 10 points. I think it helped Luke's team score more points overall. Honestly, I do. <laughs> and Luke flipped McLaurin. <laughs> and then Luke ruined it by trading for Gino. <laughs> Which he didn't even need. He has three quarterbacks now. God, Luke. Luke, also accept the trade offer that I sent you this morning. <laughs> and then I want Ayuk. AJ, before we end, uh, who do you think were some of the best waiver wire pickups this year? Um, I can think of a few. I can think of a few, too. I actually think I'll start. Sam picking up Olave was so annoying and Huge. such a good pickup. Not Well, that's kind of a two-folded Jason dropped him, so terrible move. Yeah. And then Sam scooped him. Yeah. Uh, can you think of any others, AJ? I can throw out one for a pure waiver wire ad because it's total homerism. But yeah. I picked up Devin Duvernay before week one, dude. And he's been in my roster almost every week. He's like, what, receiver? Uh, yeah. What was I going to say? Um, Thanks. I going to say... Foreman was a fantastic pickup. Oh, yeah. That was good. Uh, I forgot what I was going to say. Um, I forgot, but it was a pretty good one. Nice. Well, that one was also a great pickup. <laughs> yes. Okay, AJ, anything else from Kids Corner before we jump to Guru Sam and the injury, the injury dingeries? Nope. All right. Well, thanks for joining us today, bro. And thanks, everyone in the league for hopping on and watching this with us. Absolutely. AJ, good luck to your team. You got to stack some wins for the playoffs. Yep. 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 All right. Uh, thanks for watching. Yeah. Adios, AJ. And take it away, Sam. Bam! <laughs> Here comes the... Here comes the... Here comes the... Y'all don't really worry like... All right, what is up, Gridiron? We are back for the Week 9 Injury Report. Uh, thankfully, Week 9 was another good week as far as injuries go. Not a whole lot of new injuries to report, uh, but let's go ahead and jump right into it. Uh, first one up is going to be Romeo Dobbs, uh, just because he is one of the first injuries we saw on the day. Um, he was seen in crutches after the game. Uh, from video, it looks like it's going to be a high ankle sprain. Um, with these high ankle sprains, uh, moderate severity is going to be somewhere between a three and four week timeline. Severe um, severity uh, is going to be somewhere four to six um, weeks um, for wide receivers. Um, we expect Romeo Dobbs to miss quite a few games, possibly hit the IR. Uh, so stay tuned for some more updates on Dobbs. Christian Watson, also from the Green Bay Packers, uh, 
went out with another concussion. Uh, these are a couple of concussions that he's had this year in close succession. Uh, when you have multiple concussions like that, it's more likely that you're going to be out for an extended period of time. Uh, so we expect him to at least miss this next week and probably multi-week absence while he recovers from um, this concussion. Also from the Green Bay Packers, we had Aaron Jones. Um, he left the game in a walking boot. Uh, X-rays came back and they were negative. It's looking like it's a low ankle sprain um, with also low severity. Um, they're saying he could play next week. Uh, we are more optimistic about Aaron Jones. Um, however, if he is active, I would think they will put a limit on his opportunities. Um, so just keep that in mind. Deion Jackson uh, hyperextended his knee. Uh, also looked lower severity. He is probably going to be good to go for next week. Uh, but we'll want to uh, monitor that as the week goes. Kind of the scary one here is Josh Allen. Uh, you may have seen him uh, clutching at his elbow. Um, he has sustained a sprained elbow ligament. Uh, more detailed is the ulnar collateral ligament. Um, for this injury, about 10% who sustain this injury are out for a couple of weeks. He dealt with a similar injury back in 2018 where he missed four games. Now they are a lot more competitive than they were back in 2018. So he is going to give it all to try and be back in there this Sunday. Um, it doesn't look like it's going to be an injury that holds him out. It's going to be more of a pain tolerance, um, which he is going to try and play through. Um, so uh, we will see how that goes for Josh Allen. Lastly for injuries this week is J.D. McKissick. Uh, J.D. McKissick suffered a neck injury. He's going this week to see a specialist. Um, it's looking like it's going to be at least a multi-week absence, most likely a stint on the IR with the real possibility of being shut down for the entire season. Um, this should open up more pass catching, two-minute drills, and third down passing opportunities for Antonio Gibson. Um, so Antonio Gibson's stock going up. Other players that got injured in this weekend's contest but returned back to action in the game include Mike Evans, Zach Wilson, and Evan Ingram. All right, let's go over to our uh, updates, injury updates. Let's start here at quarterback. Um, Sam Darnold is being activated from the injured reserve. It's more of a wait and see to see who is announced as the starting quarterback for the Panthers. It's probably not going to be P.J. Walker. It could be uh, between Baker Mayfield and Sam Darnold. Um, if it's not Darnold this week, I would expect him to be a starter at some point this season. Um, uh, Ezekiel Elliott, we're going over to the running backs. Ezekiel Elliott did not practice coming off the bye week on Monday. That is not a good sign. Um, it is unsure when he will make it back onto the practice field, but one thing is for sure, when he does, it will be with a knee brace. He will be planning his next couple of contests that he will be wearing a knee brace, which could slow him down a bit. Um, but we've seen plenty of players play with devices and be successful, i.e. Uh, um, Dalvin Cook uh, with the shoulder device uh, being very effective for him. Uh, Gus Edwards, hamstring. Uh, Harbaugh says the plan is to have Gus back uh, during week 11, so following their bye week this week. Uh, that does put him in the typical window for hamstring strains, which is usually around two to four weeks. Uh, we won't have an update for him until next week, however. Uh, Chuber Hubbard, ankle, practice in full today. He should be good to go for this weekend. Uh, Jonathan Taylor um, was ruled out this past Sunday's game against the Patriots. Seems like the re-aggravation of the ankle could sit him this week as well. Uh, we'll want to monitor practice reports. Uh, there is going to be no rush uh, to get him back with this offense completely floundering. Um, this week, the head coach was let go um, and looks like they are probably playing for draft picks. Um, so they are going to reuse uh, caution with Taylor uh, we should as well when putting him back into our lineups. Uh, 
Uh, over to wide receiver, uh, Jamar Chase is on the bye week. He's hoping to be ready after the bye. Again, we will want to monitor him, especially that first practice, that Monday back after the bye week. That will be a big indicator for us. Speaking of Mondays after the bye week, we have Debo Samuel with the hamstring. He was back on the practice field on Monday after the bye. Um, that is a very encouraging sign. Um, I will say Debo has an injury, uh, a history a history of soft tissue injuries lingering longer than they should. Um, so while he's back on the practice field, he will probably be a game time decision when it comes down to this weekend. Um, other wide receivers, we know the uh, Chargers, Mike Williams, Keenan Allen. Um, they are still going to be on the injury report this week. They are working their way back. If they are both ruled out, uh, Josh Palmer is a fire him up. Um, he performed great this weekend with them both out. I would expect for him to, to get the same sort of target share this coming weekend if that's the same situation. Uh, tight end Mark Andrews was ruled out on Sunday. He's now entering the bye week. He's listed as day-to-day. -day. He's, again, someone who we're going to wait and see after the bye week. Um, Darren Waller, um, they ruled him out. He could have probably played this last Sunday, but the Raiders want to wait till he's back to 100% before they put him back in. My expectation is that he will be back this week. Uh, David and Joku, um, he's been out with a high ankle sprain, which he suffered in week seven. He plans on playing this week. This would be on the early side of a high ankle recovery for the tight end position. Um, I would use caution when thinking about rolling him out into starting lineups if he is active. Uh, lastly, um, we're going to talk about Cameron Brait, uh, tight end for the Bucks. He is getting close to a return. Um, they are playing the Seahawks, which is one of the worst teams in the league against the tight end position. Even the last couple weeks when the Seahawks defense has been better, the tight end has definitely exploited them, i.e. look at Zach Ertz last week. Um, if he remains out, if Cameron Brait remains out, then uh, Otten is a definitely a, a fantasy dart throw for tight end if you need a spot start. Um, if Cameron Brait is active, neither of them are probably startable. All right, well, that's going to do it for me on your injury report. I'm going to throw it back to you, Gridiron. <laughs> Gridiron. Welcome back. Welcome back. Um, Thanks so, for the injury update, Sam. Yeah. Uh, real quick, wanted to go over how the playoffs are shaping up. Um, I did a little number crunching um, because maybe to some people it looks like Annie had clinched her spot already. Um, mathematically, no. Yeah. Annie has not clinched yet. See, playoff 100? That is incorrect. Playoff not 100, Annie. No. Um, so. And does that technically mean playoff still available for Luke and Gramps? Technically, they are both still alive. Tell, um, tell us about it, Gabe. But they are, by all means, out of the running. Um, and when I did my number crunching, I did not consider them as potential playoff makers, just to make it easier. Um, basically, we're looking at five teams right now with six wins or more. It looks almost like a certainty that all five of those teams are going to be in the playoffs um, come end of the season. Uh, so really, it, there's two spots left, and it's down to Josh Travis, uh, not Josh, Josh Allen's team, Tate, uh, Travis, myself, Jason, Pops, Aiden, and Aiden, and AJ. Um, really, the contenders are Tate, uh, Travis, myself, and Jason. Um, AJ, Pops, and Aiden all play each other uh, once or twice, so they kind of are on the cusp of needing to win out to secure the playoff spot, and they'll have to vulture off each other. So most likely all three of those teams are out of the running, um, at least as of November 11th. So walk me through a scenario where Annie doesn't make the playoffs. Simple. Annie loses out 8-6. and six. Um, The fact that we have the 14th game as a free-for-all uh, really kind of throws a wrench in it because it doesn't guarantee anyone else loses or wins. Totally. Um, so right now, considering uh, Jason, myself, and Travis are only at five losses, we could all theoretically reach nine wins. Um, that said, myself and Jason play each other, so 
Only one of you. Only one of us has the potential. Has the potential, but uh, Travis and Tate can both hit six and nine respectively. Nice. Yeah. Um. Yeah, basically that's it. So every playoff spot is technically open still. Um, but if any clinches next week, or if any wins next week, she clinches a spot. So nine is the magic number. Nine is the magic number, and, and I it, think it might become eight it soon. Be, it becomes eight if uh, the current four and five teams lose this week. Nice. Well, well, well. Uh, that'll be it for the gridiron. The gridiron. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, big thanks to AJ for joining in earlier. AJ, happy Labor Day. It's Veterans Day. Happy Labor Day. Happy Labor Day to all you veterans out there. Thanks for serving the country. Yep. And uh, this has been The Gridiron! The Gridiron! This has been The Gridiron. The Gridiron. AJ. Like and subscribe. Bye, bye. The Green Iron. The Green Iron.